Hello everyone, welcome back to The War Room. And today we're gonna go over one of many series of uh, videos called Learn As We Play. This is for Flying Colors by GMT. It's by Mike Nagel. Uh, for those of you that don't know what this game is about, it's about the age of sail battles that occurred between England and France. Now there, there are other countries involved as well as like the Dutch and the Spanish, but in the first volume of this game, um, it's only the English and the French. So this takes place in a period of time, roughly about uh, the mid 1700s to the late 1800s. Um, and this is every bit the Age of Sail game that you would see. Now I'm only gonna work with small amounts of components here, generally just maybe one or two ships just to show you how everything is. Uh, but this game is about fleet battles. This game can have hundreds of different um, um, ships that are having fights at any one point in time. And I mean, if I'm showing you anything, I'm gonna show you this real quickly. Um, you know, you see two ships here, but I mean, I've got hundreds. This all comes with, this is all your French, French and, and your, your English uh, ship of the lines. I mean, we have a ton of ships here that you can use to mimic some of the old, um, age of sale battles of the day, real battles that actually occurred. I'm gonna give you my disclaimer. I do not know all the rules to this game. I have played this game solo. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the ships themselves. All right, now they're a little hard to see. I'm gonna bring it up to your face here. If you can see them, I'm gonna tap on the camera here. Okay, that is the Albion. It's a English ship, all right? And the tokens for these ships are pretty simple. Okay, there's two sides. One has a yellow banner, and the other one has just a red banner, which is the matching color of the English fleet. All right. Now, the number on the left, the three, that is the ship's rate. Okay. Um, if you ever watched Master and Commander, they talk about um, uh, Russell Crowe's ship. The surprise talks about the Asheron being a, a ship that's outclassed her. You know, they, that's the class. You have one being your, your bigger ships, your, your, your battleships, if you will. They didn't call them battleships. They were the ship of the line. And then you have rates going as far as like nine, which are smaller little boats. Okay. The 11 represents damage. So on the left, excuse my fingers here, that's your rate. It gives you an idea what kind of class of ship it is. It gives you an idea of guns and, and manpower. That's your damage. All right. The next thing you're going to have is the ship's name. And these are all real ships. I don't know if you can see that clear. That is the Albion. Okay. The number below with the M, that's the Marines. That's how many um, ship to ship fighting men are on board the ship. And a little number here off to the right is gunnery and actual rate. And it's just for historical purposes. Apparently, some people play this for the historical value. Um, so uh, you could use these numbers, but it's not necessary. It just gives you an idea, oh, there's 74 guns on the ship, and uh, the rate is a three. All right, now, once the ship hits 11, all right, it's not over with. It flips over to this side, and then it has 11 more points of damage. And as you can see, the rate, everything goes down. Even the rate, it's not like more of a class five instead of a three. The Marines are now less, all right? And it shows the victory points if you if you take her a prize, if you, if you capture her or sink her, and that's how many points you'll get. And that is a ship, excuse me. Same thing for the, the um, French, all right? The maps, I'll just go over the maps really quickly. There are four maps that come with the deluxe version, the first volume. There's four maps. Um, they do always have some kind of shallow areas. There are rules. You can add the shallow part as an option. You don't have to, but you can uh, as part of, uh, you know, the flavor and make the, the battle more interesting. Hull damage are these little pieces right here, uh, and they flip. Oh, it's a little blurry there. You can see the one and the five. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, that's one. You flip it over. It turns into a two, and you mark hull damage. There's a big difference between the two of hull damage and sail damage. All right, there is a there is a difference. All right, the sail damage looks like this. Okay, it has a little sail. You flip it over, goes to two. If you 
can see it okay. Try to get out of that direct light. All right, and you'd put these on the ships as you go. Now, the problem with this game is for, if you have a ton of ships, you know, you have like 40, 50 ships on this map, you know, and it's spread open, that's gonna become a problem. So this game also comes with, is it comes with sheets. All right, look at that. You can mark down which ship it is, what rate it is, all the damage and everything. Um, if it's a drift, if it, you know, how much, if it's, it's on fire, how much damage is it causing? I'll get a little closer there so you can see it. Again, I kind of have to keep adjusting my camera. And you can order these online if you want more, or they're simple eight by 11, so you can make as many copies as you want. Fired starboard, there's also a port. Starboard being the right side of the ship, port being the left. Okay, whenever you fire during a turn, you gotta place this little marker on your guys so that you know you fired them, all right? And once they're both fired, they're done for that turn. You can't fire any more um, rounds. It takes time. It takes time to fire those cans and reload them, okay? This isn't modern Navy, so it it's a little bit of a different animal. Struck, all right, when you stri struck colors, I don't know if you see that. That means you've given up. That ship's no longer in the battle. He's 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 taking off. He's gone. What that is, it's a picture of a of, of the white flag coming out. Okay. On the other side, it's also a struck, but it's it's considered captured. One side is struck, where you're you're done, the captain's leaving, he's no longer sticking around, and the other side is captured. Out of command. So generals like, um, I'm sorry, admirals like uh, Horatio Nelson, if you ever heard about him, he was kind of a big deal to the English Navy. You'll have admirals in these bigger fleets, and they have a command presence over all of your different groups. And if you're out of command, like this says, um, you get mul negative multipliers. On the other side, it shows vulnerable. So if a ship is like on fire and it's pretty damaged and it has bad things happening to it, you can put vulnerable on there. You got your wind marker. I'm not even going to show that. It shows where the wind's pointing. And yes, wind is a big deal in this game. Um, full sail. All right. Now, in this game, everything's about your sails. All right. I don't know if you can see that. The problem is, when you're in a fight and you got your sails on full, you have more chances of losing your mast. Yes, you can lose your masts and hurt yourself. Uh, in the real old days, they wouldn't be at full sail when they're going to fight. In case, uh, again, if they're making aggressive maneuvers, they're not going to lose a mast. But more importantly, they also don't become a fouled, right? So fouling in uh, sea terms is the idea that your, your ship's riggings and sails would get combined and then they're locked together. It's kind of a bad deal. You got some tokens like this one. If you ran aground, that is if you're in these little um, uh, shallow areas, and if you're on fire, self-explanatory, grappled. So this is like your old stew-style fighting. You know, the ships come along each other and they're fight. You know, they're launching grappling hooks on each other, and they're that's when you're launching your marines. On the other side of this chit, you have fouled. That's where your ships are physically connected because they ran into each other show you some of the stuff here that we've got so here's your adrift markers as you can see the the damages can go up pretty high and then finally we have you know command split this is to show these are like little markers you put on the um map just to show who's in command and who's out of command all right dismasted all right obviously if he loses a mass that hurts your mobility there you go all your admirals okay and they show their command and their attack abilities uh, just to make sure. Yeah. So the top. So, for example, let's take a look at this guy right here. If you can see him. Uh, what's his name? Duckworth. Duckworth. He's got a command range of six. And he has a command quality of two, which, again, adds some modifiers to the battles. Um Basically, when you're when you're communicating between shifts uh, ships, the quality might be a little different depending on the certain um, guys you use. All right, some have a high quality, some have a low quality, and that may affect their ability to follow those orders. And so, all of these admirals have that ability on there as well. And that's just some of the components that you have. There's your turn track. Some scenarios may require a certain amount of turns. It also has your um, sequence of play. I know it's a little, it's got a little bit of that glow on there. I'm sorry. I apologize. Wind direction. You could put the wind 
direction on here, which this is a bad shit. It's very small. I would probably get like an arrow or something, find something like a toy arrow or plastic arrow or something. And then the weather can, that all affects it. Now, like I said, this is a lot of chits. For our demonstration, for the next couple of videos, I'm going to be using these chits to show what's going on with these ships. But obviously, if you have like 40, 50 ships on this on this map, if you're playing a real serious uh, game with someone, you're probably going to use the sheet of paper and just mark it off. Uh, you mark a ship and mark what's going on. You might have a fire on there just to show. Or you definitely want to use your um, you know, starboard or port side shots so you know what's been fired. The most complicated part about this game that I came across where I'm probably going to make the most mistakes out of is one movement between ships. So, for example, let me get this crap out of the way. Um, if I got two ships, when they're moving along each other and you're coming like from behind the ship, you got to choose between port side or starboard side. Um, if you're coming from this side, you have to like stay on the right-hand side. And those rules are just so that you don't get off a, a double shot on one ship. Um, it's more realistic. Um, so that's a little bit confusing to me. Uh, the other one is marine combat, Malay combat as they call it. Now, as always, I'm always welcoming you guys commenting, letting me know if you know this game and you see something I do wrong, I will make a supplement video and I'll put your name in there. Just make sure you give me a source. Give me a source of your information so I can look it up and verify it. If not, I'll just remove the comment. It's nothing personal. I just want to keep the integrity of the channel because I want to learn. I know you guys want to learn. So help me do that by working together. So that's the first video. So we're going to start off with just an introduction. You kind of went over these pieces. You kind of understand now, you know, there's a couple of sides to them. And they have different types of... Uh, uh, chits, and we're going to be using these chits later.